I thought I'd lead the way with maid, but the table flipped suddenly last month when my brother died within three days of an expedited maid approval. Harvey was my big brother. He was 15 years older than I. He taught me how to ride a two-wheeler. He opened my first bank account and the dollar a week I earned walking a dog got tucked safely there. He left for Ghana with Cuso when I finished grade too, and I wouldn't see him again until I started grade five. My tears were endless. When I was diagnosed with MS at age 17, it was Harv who helped me cope when I flew home from a Toronto hospital. Harv and I shared a love of boats, thanks to our father skippering all sizes of fleet. As I grew up, Harv and I just got closer, but he remained my adored big brother. I am fortunate to have had a wonderful journalistic career. I reveled in my work, whether on weeklies, dailies, or national magazines. This despite being given a drop-dead deadline of 35 with the MS and I relished my advocacy work on behalf of health care. A Toronto Daily even dubbed me the indefatigable Ms. Sims. Then ovarian cancer whispered with another drop-dead deadline. It was a crooked piece of time. Beat that one too, but had to go on long-term disability. Didn't stop me from writing. I went on to write five books. Three went international, and I made it into five international anthologies. I'm still writing. Indeed, I'm blessed to be partnered with Dennis. We've been together 14 years, but neither of us knew back then what a life of caregiving he'd be marrying into. I'm like an adult baby needing all the accompanying care, but he's patient and puts up with all kinds of shit. I feel it's servitude he gives me. I asked Dennis to the terrace one summer evening. I talked about Maid. Predictably, his response that it was suicide, a cop-out, leaving others to pick up the pieces of grief. As if that doesn't happen with any death. Said, 
months of on and off tension. Driving home from an out-of-town play in Blythe one night, he quietly said, I get it. Stunned into uncommon silence, I asked him to repeat. Why? How? Now? Were all my questions. He saw my pain even moving in the wheelchair van. He's been on my side ever since, although he dreads the day. Made is in my back pocket. When I call on her, she'll be my servant indeed. Both her intention and her action. Knowing I had made and wanting to relieve Dennis of tasks, I immediately redid my will, bought a niche at the cemetery, and paid for my cremation and funeral. Being a writer, doing my obit took longer. There's no purchase in suicide talk with me. I believe the mystical, magical, mysterious, divine understands the desire to end suffering. I've dealt with MS for 51 years. Yet, there are the two solitudes of blackness and light, fear and excitement when the needles take me out. I'm betting on excitement and divine light. <laughs>